You're seeing footage from the autonomous vessels. They've arrived. Are they here to stay? Panel that took place at the International Workboat Show. One of the speakers you can see here is Tom Latham. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to connect with Tom at the event, but thankfully he's he's here right now to talk about the, the panel and some of his takeaways from it and from the International Workboat Show. So Tom, great to connect with you. Oh, likewise, Jeremiah. Good to connect with you too. So I, I apologize for not being able to do this at the event, but that maybe that gives us a chance to, to get a better perspective of it. So, you know, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and about the perspective, uh, Hamilton Jet's perspective that you were able to bring to the to the panel? Well, I think from a Hamilton Jet perspective, um, we had how oh, two two years ago we had 150 uh, vessel applications with some sort of autonomous capability, whether it was uh, um, station keeping, precision maneuvering, etc. cetera. Um, and that now that number has grown to 200 and we have another 200 in the pipeline. So the perspective is, is that we have embraced it because water jets lend themselves by vectoring the thrust with a reverse bucket, you can really have precise maneuvering. That's one of the reasons why people pick water jets is the maneuvering capabilities. So since that time, uh, a lot of those vessels as well have um, an XCI interface that we call Jet Lake. And uh, that allows us to talk to other autonomous providers, okay, to enhance that to more skipper assist and, and uh, collision avoidance, et cetera. Uh, now at the workboat show immediately after the panel um, was the culmination of another thing that we, we did and that's performed um, strategic alliances with key players like Sea Machines. And we jointly developed JetSense, which takes um, our autonomous offering to not only being able to interface with others, but also have our own offering around skipper assist and collision avoidance and course plotting. So, I mean, it's, it's really about these, these, you know, the question in the, in the title of it was, uh, you know, they've arrived, autonomous vessels have arrived, are they here to stay? I mean, for the most part, the answer is, is yes, but those partnerships that you just mentioned, it, it's all about the how or what that looks like them staying. Yes. And a couple of other things that are driving that too is um, right now, the autonomous mar marine market is approximately 3.1 billion. Um, well, by um, and that's in 2021. In 2025, that number is going to be, I think it's 5.24 billion. So we're talking about considerable growth. And uh, uh, so we have a lot of adopters, basically. Okay. And, um, and the other thing that's going to fuel that growth is, you know, before autonomy, most people think of autonomy as just purely unmanned. But that's not the case. The skipper assist function is really is really critical as well because it allows the crew to focus on other things um, as needed. And that, that came up in the session as well, is that it can't be about thinking of autonomous vessels or that capability in, in a very strict sense. But I mean, it's part of this bigger, this bigger thought process in terms of what, uh, what these stakeholders are doing to move forward. Right. And then, you know, another thing, and I didn't bring this up in in the panel, I wish I had, because a lot of folks were worried about roles being replaced and what does the job market look like. The design of this is not really to replace roles. It's, you know, the key driver is safety. But one thing that is looming, no matter where you are in, 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 in the world, is that um, the population is aging and birth rates are not keeping up with that. And, you know, demographics are going to really also drive a shift to more autonomous capabilities throughout multiple se sectors that impact our, our, our lives, not just maritime. And, and, with that, and, and with that shift, so I mean, it's not about replacing these jobs, but, but changing them or seeing them evolve in a way that makes more sense in the, in the current world. That is true. That is 100% true. Um, were there any any kind of major takeaways from from you that you had after after talking through things with Michael and Olivier or anything that surprised you about kind of what came from that conversation? The one thing that surprised me is, again, I sat on a similar panel in 2019. 
And I think just like we have more adopters practically from an economic standpoint, they're buying more, more autonomous, you know, um, they're utilizing autonomous capabilities more and more as per the trends that I just mentioned. But the, um, the embracing of the crowd, you know, the crowd seem to be more engaged and, and embracing of the technology than they were two years ago. So, so the, I mean, you've seen the reception of this, of this what, topic. Yeah. I mean, just, just change in, I mean, less, less than two years. Yeah, I think the reception is, yeah, that was the word I was searching for. I'm glad you brought that up because that's, uh, yeah, the reception was much more positive. Oh, that's great to hear. And, you know, and speaking of that, and show a quick shot of your, of your guys' booth at the Workboat Show, you know, how did some of the, some of what you talked to up at the, on the stage kind of carry over into the conversations you were able to have at the Hamilton Jet booth? Well, I think the, the thing was, and I mentioned it during the panel, that when I talked about strategic alliances, and I said immediately after this panel, we're going to have an announcement about an all new product that we've developed with C machines. So I think once we did our formal launch and unveiled uh, our kiosk, which was shrouded in black, it looked like a monolith, uh, you know, a, a monolith more than anything. And then we we unveiled it, and we had so many questions and positive reinforcement of a about the uh, the launch of the product and how it's needed. And this came from a cross section of people, whether it was defense contractors, naval architects, operators. We, we were, I mean, I was um, somewhat surprised that we had such enthusiasm around the product. Again, I mirror that back to what was experienced two, two years ago. The enthusiasm and reception was just, amazing and that and that stayed with the booth and then afterwards we have a, a function on the first day of the show that we do for some of our customers it's it's at the grand dial restaurant across the street from the convention center and there was a lot of buzz even there about our product launch and autonomy so again reception embracing the technology enthusiasm that's that's kind of how it carried over from 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 the panel. So, Tom, I know one of the one of the topics that came up on the panel was was about regulation and where regulators currently stand about aut autonomous vessels. Um, so, can you talk a little bit about how that was discussed on the panel? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, there really hasn't been a lot of regulatory consistency uh, around autonomy, and I think that's because it's uh, exploded exploding in adoption. In 2018, for example, our uh, CEO attended a conference where the International Maritime Organization, which is part of the United Nations, said it would take them at least 10 years to have some sort of regulatory guidance. I think, um, well, first of all, that's clearly not keeping up with the growth, but I think the growth along with continued stakeholder involvement will speed up that timeline. It's just unclear by how much, but 10 years is definitely not acceptable. And as adoption continues to increase, we'll see the regulations start to catch up. You, know, you mentioned there there were there were some questions that that folks had coming over to your to your booth, and since they aren't able to go to your booth anymore since the show's over, you know, for anybody who's who's heard what you had to say about autonomous vessels and wants to either learn more or explore what taking the next step might look like for them, what what advice would you have? Um, I would just say um, to reach out to the stakeholders that are active in in, in the space. There there are, there are quite a few. Um, in terms of water jets, I think we're the first one to debut something like JetSense, okay? But uh, I would just encourage them, um, first of all, to understand uh, um, the use of the vessel that they're intending to build and how autonomy might impact them. You know, we take the application process very, very serious because the most important thing for us is to size the jets correctly. So we go through a lot of collaborative discussions with the naval architects, the end user, et cetera, and arrive at, at the right size jet. And then we pick the controls, you know, and some folks, if it's a smaller application, they might choose mechanical controls. More and more though, they're choosing um, electronic controls and, 
and our suite of electronic controls allows us to have an interface module that talks to others, as, as I said earlier, or JetSense is available. Beautiful. Well, very glad to hear that that reception has, has changed in a big way in 2021 and looking forward to seeing how that further evolves and develops in 2022 and beyond. Thanks for, uh, for taking the time to connect, Tom. All right. Yeah, my pleasure.